More and more EVs will hit the streets, oceans, and skies in the coming years as the landscape of electric vehicles shifts swiftly in response to technological advances and rising consumer demand. Now, the annual growth rate of sales of electric vehicles in the United States has been over 40% since 2016, and by 2035, the world's main car markets will be exclusively electric, offering a glimpse of a green future and a massive economic opportunity. But what exactly are the different kinds of EVs? And which one would you pick if you were to buy one? Hey guys, welcome back! This is Fred, and in this video, let's take a look at what a hybrid car is and other different types of EVs that are on the market right now. But before we do that, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons and let's get to it! Let's start with the hybrid car. What is it and how does it work? Simply put, a hybrid vehicle is propelled by an electric motor and a gasoline engine and its system recovers lost energy through regenerative braking. It's possible to have either the electric motor or the gas engine do all the work or for the two to cooperate. That means higher fuel economy as a direct result of reduced gas consumption. And in some cases, adding electric power can even improve efficiency. Now, they all rely on a high-voltage battery pack recharged by reclaiming the heat usually produced by the brakes during deceleration. Additionally, the hybrid's gas engine is used to charge and maintain the vehicle's battery. Moreover, different hybrid designs are used by automakers to achieve varying goals such as maximizing fuel economy or minimizing production costs. What are the types of hybrid cars? The first type is the series hybrid. In this configuration, propulsion is supplied entirely by the electric motors, and there is no mechanical link between the engine and the wheels at any time. Basically, the only purpose of the gas engine is to charge the battery, and the result is smooth and forceful acceleration, which is more typical of electric vehicles. When a gasoline engine starts off, it usually produces less vibration than an electric motor. On the other hand, the engine may rev up when the car is traveling at a constant pace. This is because the engagement doesn't always coincide with what your right foot is doing. Now, this behavior has been deemed disturbing by some, and one example of a series hybrid is the BMW i3, which comes equipped with a range extender. Next is the parallel hybrid. Typically, a single transmission is used to connect the gasoline engine to the electric motors, so combining the two power sources. Now, that gearbox could be automatic, manual, or CVT. And a power split CVT like the ones seen in the Toyota Prius and the Chevrolet Volt is one type of hybrid transmission that has become increasingly common. In addition, how a parallel hybrid drive sounds and it feels is primarily determined by the type of transmission and the size of the gasoline engine. Toyota, Lexus, Hyundai, Kia, Ford, Honda, Lincoln, Nissan, and Infiniti are just a few brands that share similar design philosophies. And lastly, the plug-in hybrid. Plug-in hybrids are an improvement on the traditional hybrid design. They include a larger battery pack that needs to be recharged using an external energy source like that of an electric vehicle. Now, this bigger energy storage capacity is similar to a larger gas tank. It enables longer distances of all electric driving, which is between 15 and 55 miles. And this depends on the model and can drastically cut gasoline use. In fact, if you just need to go a small distance to work and back and plug in each night, you can get by almost entirely on electricity. Now, when the battery runs out, the automobile operates like a regular parallel hybrid. 
And among the hybrid plug-in vehicles is the Chrysler Pacifica minivan. Now, there are also different variations on the hybrid type of car. You see, answering the question, what is a hybrid, has become increasingly complex over the past two decades. For instance, Honda's latest hybrid architecture doesn't fall cleanly into the series or parallel bucket. And in this configuration, the engine can turn a generator or directly drive the wheels, as in a series or parallel hybrid. Then there are through-the-road hybrids, such as Volvo's plug-in hybrids, which combine a normal front-wheel drive powertrain with an electric motor at the back axle. Additionally, the front axles of the Acura NSX, BMW i8, and Porsche 918 Spyder supercars are all electric, making them identical to one another. The first and most popular variation is the mild hybrid. Now, the vehicles I mentioned are all examples of full hybrids because their electric motors can propel them, albeit slowly, for some distance. You can't do it with a mild hybrid. Like in a full hybrid, the electric motor in a mild hybrid works in tandem with a gas engine to enhance efficiency and performance. The automatic start-stop system uses this component as its starter to conserve gasoline by turning off the engine when the vehicle is parked. Although mild hybrids were developed to speed up the introduction of hybrid technology to the market at a lower cost, they cannot provide the same benefits to fuel efficiency as complete hybrids, and because of this, they were never as well-liked. However, 48-volt electrical subsystems are now being used in popular automobiles like the Ram 1500. This proves that mild hybrid powertrains are returning. And now, automakers are installing mild hybrid systems in every new vehicle. Now, before we continue with this list, don't forget to try our super thanks wherein your comments will be highlighted, or you could also join our membership program. And now that you've done that, let's talk about the other types of EVs. First is the Battery Electric Vehicles or BEVs. Right now, companies and governments are making bold predictions about the types of automobiles everyone will be driving in the future, and they all point to battery electric vehicles. For instance, in Europe, policymakers are debating whether or not to outlaw the sale of new gasoline-powered automobiles after 2035. The good news is that there is a growing selection of BEVs on the market, with new offerings coming from both emerging companies and established players in the global auto market. Although EVs is the more common term, BEVs is also used to describe battery-powered automobiles. No matter what you call them, it's important to understand that they run exclusively on electricity from the grid rather than burning liquid fuel like gasoline or diesel. Electric vehicles have enormous batteries that supply electricity to one to four motors that turn the wheels. There are primarily three methods that battery-powered automobiles can connect to the grid for charging. To begin, there is the regular 110-volt power socket. Now, successfully recharging a BEV with this method is possible. However, it's not ideal because it can take days to fully recharge an empty EV battery pack. Moreover, a level 2 charger used by many BEV owners requires a charging unit that plugs into a 240-volt outlet, such as those used by certain household clothes dryers or workshop tools. Depending on the size of the battery pack, a level 2 charger can fully recharge an electric vehicle's battery in as little as 6 to 12 hours. Home level 2 chargers are also widely available at public charging stations giving EV drivers even more options. Lastly, DC fast chargers are the most powerful type of charger, and these can recharge an electric vehicle's battery to 80% capacity in 20 to 40 minutes, depending on the model. 
and due to the nature of energy absorption in batteries, it is best to charge rapidly up to 80% and then gradually increase the current to maximize battery life. And lastly, we have the Hydrogen Fuel Cell Electric Vehicle. The Hyundai Nexo and the Toyota Mirai are the only new hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles currently on the market. These automobiles do not connect to the power grid, but they are nevertheless classified as electric vehicles due to the electric motor that drives the wheels. Now, the power is generated by fuel cells instead of the grid, which is the main distinction. And similar to internal combustion engines, fuel cells may turn fuel into usable energy. Moreover, an FC EV does not use gasoline to power its engine. It runs on hydrogen fuel, which is carried in a dedicated hydrogen fuel tank within the vehicle. This is refilled at a dedicated hydrogen fueling station via hose connector and a secure nozzle, much like a standard gas station. The hydrogen is chemically transformed into energy by the fuel cell of the FCEV, which is then transmitted to the electric motors via a battery. In this process, the only waste product is water vapor, which is harmless to the environment and is expelled from the FCEV's exhaust pipe. Now, most of the country's hydrogen refueling stations are situated in the Golden State as the U.S. Department of Energy reported. However, this number is likely to increase since several transportation firms have shown enthusiasm for researching and creating hydrogen fuel cell vehicles for long-distance transport. So now that you know the different types of electric vehicles, which of these types would you consider when buying an EV? Make sure to drop your choice in the comments section below. And while you're at it, make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons as well. Now, if you want to know more about EVs, then make sure to click this video right here. And see you there! Thanks for watching and see you next time!